I'm going to make the cheapest, easiest stand for inexpensive portable bandsaw to make a really cool, cheap metal cutting bandsaw. When I searched the internet, I found dozens and dozens of examples of stands made for inexpensive bandsaws. I'll include the links to these examples in the show notes below. Many of them were made out of metal, used welding to create the stand. Occasionally a couple were hung from a stand of some sort. All of them seemed to me to be very complicated. There was a couple of ones that I really liked for their simplicity. And there were even some by famous makers like Jimmy DeResta and eventually um, even Adam Savage made a stand that I thought was actually closer to what my idea was. And my idea, very simply, is to make it out of one piece of metal and some plywood. No welding or metal fabrication really needed. It's very, very simple, and I want to show you how I made it. And it's built for a Harbor Freight bandsaw. The core of this saw is a Harbor Freight Bauer um, metal cutting variable speed bandsaw. It normally runs for $130, which is still um, a great bargain even at that price. Um, it's pretty hefty and um, heavy and will cut through um, a six inch pipe and of course rebar and other kinds of uh, metal. But um, I bought it uh, from Harbor Freight with a coupon for $90. And that was a tremendous bargain. And you should probably look around because they often will sell for that amount. The other material that I bought was a 10 by 10, one quarter inch thick steel plate that I got on Amazon. This is the plate that's used to hang the saw from. And it is also a very flat surface. Um, I'll have a link um, in the show notes below. The first thing I did was to make a carbon template of the plate to get the shape and size correct. And then I cut out a little corner notch so that it can fit into the saw. I cut a kerf for the saw blade to go into. I filed the edges a little smooth and then I began drilling the corner holes for the mounting. These bolts that hold the guide will be used to mount the plate later on and I'm using them right now to try and indicate where I should drill the holes in the plate. So I have put some um, paint on them and I'm going to lay the plate down on top of them to guide me for the right place. And again I will substitute these bolts with others, longer ones, that will hold this plate and the stand below it. The markings are now on the bottom of the plate and I'm going to drill mounting holes for the bolts um, at those locations. Um, and as I was drilling them, I did have a little mishap because I was not careful enough in my measurements. And in fact, um, one of the holes was a little off. Um, and I want to just tell you about that mistake because we all make mistakes and it's sort of how we recover. So after I finished drilling these, I countersunk the holes to receive the bolts from the top. But um, I'm now going to use an end mill to enlarge one of the holes. I don't have a lathe, but you can put an end mill into the chuck of your drill press. And you can actually drill a hole sideways. Again, I'll put a link for the bit. You'll need to use a flat head metric bolt. I use an M516 and that recessed countersunk bolt will keep the screws below the surface of the plate. Next up is to make the box. I use 10 inch wide birch, bolted birch, um, which I had on hand. It's a pretty um, simple construction, just making a box really in any way you want to. Um, and before I glued it up, I decided to do the electronics 
and to install a switch on the side. I was using an ordinary extra light switch that I found. The problem there, of course, is that um, mounted behind the throw for the switch is not quite long enough for going through the three quarter inch uh, plywood. So um, I was forced to drill a slot, which I'm going to mount the saw behind. And um, then I will extend the throw, the switch part, with a piece of metal from a piece of aluminum tube. So now I am drilling the holes uh, for the slots, the end of the slots, two holes, and I will cut out the um, center with a jigsaw and file it up. And this um, will enable me to mount the switch inside the box so that the electronics and the wiring's out of the way um, and still have um, access to the switch outside. So I'm using a jigsaw to cut between the drill holes. I'll file it up a little bit to smooth it out. Very rough construction. Um, and then I took a aluminum tube which I piece of scrap and I squished it in the vise to make a little tab um, I'll around the corners and then um, I fit that onto the toggle itself and so you can see I have a extended switch I'm just going to sand it a little bit for get rid of the burrs and the um, the metal edges, smooth them out some, and um, then um, I'm going to um, throw a coat of red paint on it because I like red switches. Every switch should be red, I think. Um, and then I give it a, a, a try to make sure that um, it will work. Um, and then once the paint is dry and the switch is done, um, it's just a matter of assembling the rest of the a box and glue it up. So um, the switch seems to work okay. I will later epoxy it. Now I'm just um, wood gluing the pieces together. Um, I will tack them with um, just a little nail gun and then I will add some screws just for added strength in a couple places. Again, most of the weight of the saw is downward. Um, it's self-supporting. There's not a lot of um, side tension on the box. So um, the construction was pretty simple. Um, just uh, aligning them, making sure it was square. Um, Attacking them with uh, a nail gun and um, then fitting the uh, tops in the side. And there is um, no back because the saw will slip in the back. And this Harbor Freight saw, the rubber handle actually lines up pretty well with the bottom. And so I will be using the bottom of the handle, the bottom once it's stood up, to take up some of the weight so that the entire saw's weight is not just hanging on the plate. It actually is supported from the bottom um, a little bit. Again, I, 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 I will show you, but I wedged a piece of wood in the bottom to take some of the weight off so that it's not just hanging from the top plate. Here we go. Um, again, I'm just uh, nail gunning the pieces in, and then I'm going to um, screw and countersink and drill, countersink and screw some additional, um, a, few, a few screws there just to make sure that um, nothing moves and also to help it um, uh, dry very secure as well. So um, before I added the final top, I started to do the electronics and um, 
that entailed um, splicing into the um, electrical cord of the um, saw. Here it is. I'm testing the fit. You can see there. So the top plate is there and the saw kind of hangs from the top plate, but also will rest slightly on the bottom. I will open up the cord, the power cord, um, and that in this position, I will insert the switch, which I kind of marked with the yellow tape where I want it and where it fits into the interior. And again, I'm just taking a re regular household light switch, which I'm, I'm going to insert and wire up. Um, making sure I got the right wire. Um, always a little nervous at that point. Um, strip the wires and um, there was nothing fancy. I um, didn't need to solder. I'm just using um, this clips in the actual um, light switch itself. So I um, needed to make them a little bit wider. And the um, idea is that uh, when this is on, when the um, power is on, um, it's actually not too noisy, as you might hear. It's working. I tested that, and for the first time, before I add the final screws, I give it a test. Um, this is a real speed. Um, I'm just using the saw blade for the very first time, going slow through a piece of scrap metal just to um, make sure that it's working and to see how much effort it requires. So um, it makes a very clean cut. Um, it can go quite fast if I need to. Um, here it is. I've added an on and off, and I. Uh, zip tied the trigger so there's no variable speed um, if I wanted to do that I could get more fancy but I just decided to run it at full speed um, here is I'm gluing in a little wedge under the rubber handle to give a little lift from that handle so that it takes some of the stress off of the plate at the top although it could hang entirely just from that plate. Um, this is a little bit added um, support. Um, this is the showing the cabling inside that was a little too longer than I needed, so I um, ran some cable ties inside. Um, and here is the final look. I epoxied the tab on the switch when I was done. Um, and had to clean it up a little bit of stuff that I spilt. But off on, I'm really happy with this. It really works great. I love it. And I'm so glad I have one. It's about $110 finished.